Hey, what's happening? Welcome to Mage TV. I'll tell you what's happening. The sky is falling. The world is no longer in colour. Everything's in black and white. There is no sense of smell, no sense of taste. Food is just drab and dire and there's no reason to get out of bed because Liverpool basically can't win. Football match at the moment. Um, we are three games into the Premier League season. Four into the season. Um... Liverpool winning the Community Shield feels a lifetime ago. Uh, two draws to open the campaign and then a defeat at Old Trafford. Um, in fairly, had a fairly limp performance around us. Left everyone feeling a bit down in the dumps and miserable. And of course, when you haven't won and you haven't seen your team win a game in the league, you can't help but have these fears gnawed away at your brain of like, will they ever do it again? Can they do it? Is it possible? Um, the answer is, of course, of course they can. Of course they will. But because the transfer window is also open as well, I think there's obviously an exacerbated negative feeling that Liverpool haven't got to address what people thought was the glaring issue that needed addressing was a midfielder. Now with Thiago injured, with Navi Keita injured, with Curtis Jones injured, as well as a, a whole host, a cacophony of injuries across the squad, effectively an entire team missing through injury or uh, including suspension of Darwin Nunes. Um, Liverpool are in a little bit of bother. So... Adding on top of all of that, there is this overriding feeling of just misery and, and, and downbeatness and negativity. And I basically had to tell the Toffee TV boys to not be in the room while I'm shooting this because um, they'd be basically bombarding me and laughing in my face uh, because comparatively speaking, you know. Um, but what I've done, because I'm fairly active online, there's a comment section below these videos, there's a comment section on Redmen videos, Twitter, all that kind of stuff. What I've decided to do is I've made myself a brew. And I sat down with my notebook and a pen, obviously, um, and list every single fear that I've seen from Liverpool fans uh, that I have myself and tie them into a few of the sort of obvious things that are going wrong to try and create a definitive list of what we feel every Liverpool problem is right now. Every single one of them and what we feel is going to undo the season and all that kind of stuff. Um, and hopefully we'll we'll have a good chat around it and see where we can come out on the end of it. I'm not promising positivity at the end here. This is very much a, a flow of conscious thought here and we'll see where we land come the end. If you've got any fears... Anything that's, that you think is the problem? What is the reason why Liverpool aren't firing? Let me know in the comments section underneath. And then basically, if I then hit upon that one um, whilst I'm doing this, um, then then let me know. Ped, body of two seconds. I said I was going to keep the Toffee TV boys out. But basically, just to, just to reiterate, I'm doing a video of like every problem that Liverpool have got right now. Okay. Um, does that fall on, on deaf ears a touch? No, no, no. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a man of... Whatever, I just want to come here and have a go at you, so... Okay, so Okay, cool, cool, cool. Do you feel it's a bit churlish of me to be worried and complaining about Liverpool? No, because your standards of where you want to be have... You know, you want the outcomes to come to you, don't you? And therefore, if you, you haven't got a midfield or your midfield is ageing slightly... Then of course, why you should? Why wouldn't you moan about it? Well, not moan about it, but critique it. Critique there it. There you go. go. That's what you're here for, aren't you? Yeah. So, so thanks, mate. There you go. Is that it? Cool. Yeah. yeah. So. What are you talking about today? Um, can we buy an actual striker? Cool. Okay. Cool. cool. <laughs> Someone who plays up front, who scores a goal. Okay. Cool. There's well problems. Um, Ted makes an interesting point, though. I'm going to go through them all. I'm going to list them all um, and try and be as comprehensive as possible on this. So I'm going to start, and in no particular order, this is just kind of what came to me as, as I wrote it down. Thiago's injury record. So Liverpool have seemingly built a lot of their system around the brilliance of Thiago Alcantara. No doubt whatsoever about his ability on the ball. Like our, our win rate when he's in the team is like exceptional stuff he is an elevator he's a footballer improves footballers around him he makes what liverpool do better he's one of those glorious beings on earth i i i marvel at his technique and ability on a football pitch but once again here we are injured he doesn't seem to be able to get a consistent run in the side because every time he does he just picks up a little a little niggle and injury and look there's a man in his 30s now for liverpool is there ever going to be better than that and the only answer to that is probably not. Um, he's on track for around 30 appearances a season. 
is that enough for a lad who is so integral to how we play? That is a major fear. That is fear number one. Fear number two, Jordan Henderson, is he fading? Has he faded? Can he still be the same level of power that he has been for Liverpool in previous years? This seems to be a big one, and, I, and I'm seeing a lot of this actually from a real extreme example. I've seen a lot of people saying, is he finished? I don't, I don't harbour the finish that he's finished. I think there's a lot of that doing around at the moment. But there is a concern of, is Jordan Henderson in the eight, the midfielder Liverpool need for how they want to play football anymore? And if that's the case, is if he's not that, if that's not the case anymore, do we have enough uh, for him not to play there? And if we're asking him to be in the six, is he therefore good enough to be in the six? That's less of it. I think he's a really good six, but that's a slight concern. It, particularly that we know what he wants to play. We know famously in the eighteen nineteen season he goes to the clock and say, "Give me a go there," and he never really looked back, and we were so much better for it. But his performances there have been more inconsistent over the last year, I'd say, 12 calendar months maybe. Not to say they've been consistently, they've not been consistently bad, but I don't think they've been at a consistently high level. There's reasons behind that, but we're just listing fears right now. Um, next fear. We don't have any prime age centre midfielders. We do, actually. Um, we own... Naby Keita and Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain um, and Fabinho. But Fabinho's not far off not being in that anymore. Naby Keita inserts all the problems we and concerns we have about Thiago, but times them by five as an arbitrary number. And similarly for Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. Um, the, the lads who should be nailed on starters for Liverpool's midfield, and no, Fabinho is, Naby Keita isn't. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain isn't. And that, for me, is a big gap you've got... Uh, a lot of lads who are entering into the, the tail end of their careers, not necessarily done or finished or washed up or whatever, but you know, once you cross the 30 threshold, there's still lots of football years left in you. But when you're talking about your prime being from sort of 20, 24, 25, 26, we don't really, in midfield, we don't have any footballers who are good enough for the first team in that, in that category at the football club at all. So that is a major, that's a, that's, that's a big one. Okay, next one, generally speaking, ties into that. Are, are our stars too old? Well, Virgil van Dijk, post-30. Thiago, post-30. Henderson, post-30. Firmino, post-30. Salah, post-30. Andy Robertson's getting towards that. Not just yet, but you know. Um, we saw Liverpool start with the oldest average age team. I think we've put out since ninety mid-90s um, in the Charity Shield. It's not been much younger. And obviously the inclusion of James Milner in the last couple of weeks. Um brings it up, even though Harvey Elliott will obviously help to, to lower it down a little bit. Liverpool are an old side, and this links into that point that I made previously about not enough sort of prime age midfielders, because when you're dropping people in, what you want is your main team, you know, it'd be nice to have your main lads who are playing 50 games a season are all right in there, and Trent is in that, I say Robbo's still in that as well. Alisson's coming out of that, but obviously he's a goalkeeper, so that's kind of fine. Jota is in that, I think, but of course he's having his own injury issues as well. I don't know. What you need is you need more Trent Alexander-Arnold levels of availability and Andy Robertson levels of availability um, from players who are in, in the right, right in, ripe, shall we say. Uh, not overripe, but underripe. Um, the quad bid has wiped the squad out mentally. Huge. Huge. This one keeps me lying awake at night because it, it wiped me out mentally. I don't know about you. I am absolutely... I still feel the mental burden of last season. And I all I had to do was watch the games and talk about the games. Good life, right? It is. I've had much worse jobs than this, so I'm not really complaining. But I think even people who didn't have it as a job, it was tiring. It was it was tiring because of how much emotion you throw into football. I didn't do the running on top of that as well. In fact, I made a joke with someone. Who was it? In fact, I might have been, I might have been I just wanted a player in passing on, on pre-season, maybe about how like, I felt exhausted. I have no idea how you felt. Um, but I do worry about that. That was the worry when we when we lost in Kiev. How would Liverpool go that close and deal with the heartbreak? Well, they picked themselves up and they got to second in the league, ninety what? What was it? Ninety plus points? Ninety five? Ninety seven? Ninety seven points? Um, won the Champions League, and then the disappointment of not winning the league. In addition to that, they go and win the league the next season. We've seen normally they pick themselves up really well. But I don't know. It reminds me a little of, and we've seen this a couple of times in the past, and this is one of the fears of was 2008-2009. We came second and then made a couple of changes personnel. They didn't click. They weren't quite at the level. 
and Liverpool stumbled because of an injury pro- a crisis at the start of the season in defence and then they never mounted that title chance and they were always on the back foot, they were always fighting against themselves and we see a number of times that's happened where we've come close and not kicked on 13-14, to that after 2001-2002, after that we have a little, a little struggle. Um, so that's a concern. You've gone as deep as you possibly can. This team came close to footballing immortality and just fell short. I'm not sure how you can fully recover from that with a shortened pre-season on top of that as well. And, you know, with, with other things looming on the horizon, which I will come to. So, yeah, that's a huge one for me is have they got over the mental fatigue? Have they got, when you've come so close, can you, how do you pick yourselves back up again? Particularly if you're trying to go a game for the quad, because that was just a ludicrous. Maybe the standards have been set too high. Maybe the bar and the challenge for this team is too much. Maybe it needs to be lowered. Maybe they just need to say, no, we just need to go and be good in the league this season. Don't worry about anything else. That's a big one. Big, big one. Um, Pep Linders' book has given away all of our secrets. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, inevitably, I do feel like we look for causality sometimes, and we look for you know we look for simpler solutions to problems that have got deeper deeper causes um the the assistant manager releasing a book where he gives a lifts a lifts the lid and uh, a tell-all tale about what liverpool do behind the scenes the timing of it when liverpool then don't win football matches it, that's unfortunate i think but look it's there i've seen that said a number of places or so on saying like this is what happens when you turn uh, the training center into water stones for the weekly up <laughs> to the first game of the season um i did have one my one point on this though there's a point where he talks a lot about First pass forward, first pass forward. And, and look, I, and this is why I'm not a tactician, but there was a little part of me that went, have you just told the entire Premier League and all of Europe that every time you pass the ball to a player, their next pass is going to be forward every time? Because that stands the reason. That, and that doesn't mean you, that means you know exactly where they're going to pass, but it does suggest that there's a, you're losing 180 degrees worth of angles of passes because you can write them off because you know they're going to first pass forward unless this is 4D chess from Pep. And now we're not doing nothing but passing backwards because nobody expects it. Um, but yeah, there was one. I saw that one. I've seen that one floating around a little bit. Um, we failed to foresee slash foreplan for midfield issues. Yeah, it ties into fitness and availability and injury records. We know Thiago doesn't play 50 games a season. We know Naby doesn't play 50 games a season. Ox. None of our midfield really are the lads who play loads and loads of games of football. Did we have we made a mistake by not buying someone in sooner for this? But don't buy lots, lots of midfielders. Um, is this something that could have been avoidable? Because even we can see from the outside that there's there's lots of injury prone issues with Liverpool's midfield. They have got a lot of bodies, and maybe that was the solution for how they tried to cope with that. But you know, could we not have gone into the market and got a 22 year old who two years ago who's now ready to make the big breakout? You could argue, of course, that that's. Harvey Elliott, I guess, even though he's a bit younger than that, but we'll we'll see on that one. Um, oh, speaking of which, Harvey Elliott isn't ready. That's a possibility. He's 19 years old. We shouldn't be putting loads of expectation. And then my additional fear to this is that we t- Harvey Elliott has to be Liverpool's main man. And listen, he might thrive under those circumstances, but at 19 years old, he's got a lot of learning just how to be a professional footballer week in, week out. I don't. That it'd be good for him to have a season where he gets to be that, where he just gets to be in the squad every week and and, and playing a lot of football games. That's how City have developed Foden. Um, that's how we developed Trent Alexander Arnold as well. We didn't rely on him. He was allowed to grow. He was allowed games out of the team. At the minute, there's a real worry that he might have to be boss each and each and every week. Mm. Let's take a moment to catch our breath. Um, similarly, Curtis Jones. What if he's not good enough? What if he's not good enough? I, I think he's a baller. I think he's got all the attributes. But what if? Um, there seems to be a lot of people who think he's just not good enough, which I don't I don't share that fear at all, by the way. I, I don't know. It's, sometimes you get a feeling when you watch a football and you can see how just good they are. I've seen a lot of lads come through Liverpool's academy and people say, these, these are the next ones. I've, we've had so many the next Steven Gerrards over the years and they all lacked certain attributes. And most of it was height. So, you know, for your, go back to your, your, your Jay Spearings and your John Welshers and your Darren Potters and um, Ben Woodburns and you've got your, more recently, his name will come back to me and he ended up at Rangers and his name was Jordan Per Jordan, wow, what's his name?
Nice. Or tweet me at the Red Men team. Doesn't matter. You take my point. Jordan P. Jordan. God damn it. Um, there's plenty of them, and, and but Jacques Jones is like six foot tall. He's got pace, he's got great control, he's got an eye for goal. He's just, he feels like he's got all the attributes to be a really, 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 really good footballer. Um, but lots of people seem to think that he might not be, and so I, I'm scared that he won't be because I think he will be, and I want him to be, and I want those people to be proven wrong. So that's a big fear for me. Um, Luis Diaz won't score enough goals. Yeah, look, he's replacing Sadio Mane effectively, um, which means you need to be a 15 to 20 plus goal a season all comps footballer, as we understand Liverpool's system to be. That might have changed, of course, but until we see that he can do it regularly in the Premier League. That's a that's a going to be a fear that lingers on. Um, Mo Salah's new contract has upset the squad's dynamic. Yeah, maybe. When we were talking about the whole pay Salah what he wants thing, that was the the lingering thing that we always said is, you know, Liverpool's side is built upon collectivism. Yes, there's a rank some people earn more than others, but there's no superstars there's no above and beyond um you know like on a pedestal on their own we've done that with Salah how does that relate to the other lads what do they do they feel that they work hard they can get to that level or is there only ever going to be one and can they not reach that level while Salah's at the club there you go mess of wires in my head over that one um Darwin Nunes uh, the fear is he's not good enough um yeah I I, I my fear is he's too raw for what we need him to be this season. It's very, very early. And this, the early signs are very, very promising, of course. But similarly, you know, this is the, the problem. He's being compared to Erling Haaland, which I think is a bit of an unfair comparison, mainly because of the, the, you know, the size of the football clubs they've come to, the comparisons between those two and the, the money spent on him. My fear is he's a year away from really being, the, the, you know, settled into what we need, you know, language-wise, just understanding his role. Actually, as a development as a footballer as well, um, I'm scared that we're putting too much on him too soon. That looks like we are. If Jota comes back, I think it's less of an issue, but it's still, it is what it is, right? Um, other teams have figured out our style of play. Yeah, maybe it ties into the Pep thing, but it does feel a lot like, you know, at the moment, Fulham gave Liverpool a game, Palace gave Liverpool a game, Man United gave Liverpool a game. Um, are Liverpool too predictable? And then in trying to not be predictable, are they trying riskier and more stupid things instead of going through, the, you know, Trusting the tried and tested to some extent, I don't know, but that is a that will be a concern until Liverpool win a football game. Um, the high line leaves us vulnerable to counter attacks. Yep, two years we've had two years on the bounce. We've had this. It's obviously considered part of how Liverpool dominate games further up the pitch. It's all part of the wider plan, but it does seem very very easy to play through Liverpool. It seems like we have to work very very hard to score a goal, and opponents have to take two passes, and then they can be in on goal. That that will be a, be one until it's not one. But that was a concern last season, and by the end of the season, our defensive record was brilliant. Now it faded a bit toward the end, and this whole conceding the first goal uh, in seven consecutive Premier League games that needs to be severely addressed because at the moment until we score goals, you need to stop conceding them. Um, we miss Sadio Mane. Yep, yeah, there you go. Every time Liverpool are not going to win a football match from now until the rest of the season, that will be the big one. And look, it's understandable. World-class footballer. Liverpool through and through. A, a, a huge part of what we do. And look, Liverpool's successes have come from having two guys who score lots of goals. At the moment, we're left with one guaranteed one in Salah until we get Jota back or until Nunes sits together or until Diaz starts scoring goals. So, yeah, Liverpool will miss, we'll miss Mane. We do miss Mane. And we're going to miss him until the point where we don't. Um, players have won everything now and lost motivation. Wow, yeah. That would be terrifying. Terrifying because, like, they've all won everything. You know, we're looking at a team then of, like, Harvey Elliott, Carvalho, Calvin Ramsey, Cueven Kelleher. Um, we're struggling. The team that we have to put on that's not won everything is nowhere near as good as the team that has won everything. And you look, teams have ups and downs. Even the best teams, you know, don't necessarily win it all every season. I mean, I mean, even Man City have been all conquered and had a season when they didn't win it. We won it. Yeah, it's great. Um, I'd like that again. I think we all would. Um, but yeah, that, that I mean, when the players don't look, when Trent looks off it, when Virgil looks off it, and Fabinho looks off it, you can't help but think, God, well, you know, why would you be throwing yourself into tackles? And it leads into the next point. Uh, the World Cup, being fit for the World Cup is ruining the mindset of our footballers. Uh, yeah, not enough talk about this, 
but we've seen it like remember Ed Nazar had that awful season and it was basically just I, I, and then he came good in the last couple of games against Liverpool funnily enough came good in the last couple of games just to make sure that he had a little bit of form to carry into the internationals with Belgium um, we've seen this time and time again where it, it occupies footballers minds and I do wonder a little bit of someone like Virgil van Dijk it's going to be his last World Cup at the peak of his powers does he you know and I've missed the Euros as well you know, you're only getting so many more international tournaments in your career. Is that is that in his mindset at all? I hope it's not. Probably isn't. But you know, I, I'm looking forward to a break <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> um, some of these are either looking forward to a break or they're looking forward to another a, a month of intense football and and and, and you know potentially driven up, delivering upon some you know childhood dreams. Could that be in their mindset? Yeah. Um, the club doctor left because of injuries. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The club doctor left and Liverpool have got a, like a massive injury crisis. Does he know something? Has he has he basically like fallen on his sword and, and, and or has he dodged a bullet by legging it before this all comes out? I've got no idea. But um, yeah, there's that. There's probably more. If you've got more, let me know in the comment section. Um, what I would suggest for most of these is Liverpool know this. <laughs> they do. Um, what... I think some of the issues are fixable by additional application. I think some of them might be fixed by just going into the transfer market and finding a, a, a good Premier League to Champions League level midfielder, as much as I don't think it's necessarily as simple as that. Um, but Liverpool, are, I've got enough players there with enough experience to be able to win games of football. It's going to be a deep, big, deep, intense period of the season. Two games a week starts from next week. It's going to take, to borrow a McFoley's intestinal fortitude, it's going to take perhaps a little bit of a, a tweak in terms of tactics, and it's going to take a, a good old slice of luck along the way. It's going to take fans getting behind the football club in a massive way. I'm glad we've got two home games back-to-back -back because there's a real chance to, to, to help motivate the team to help drag them over the line and I know that can be frustrating when you're at a stage removed from it it can feel like your voice isn't being heard so maybe you try to make your voice heard a little bit louder on social media and comment sections and all that kind of stuff it can feel a bit neutering feeling like you've got no say in what happens ultimately that is football none of us really have a, have a have a strong say in it you know okay if your football club's being led you know into the doldrums and being run to the ground by horrendous owners then you, you know you can gather together en masse but Liverpool aren't in that situation as much as people don't like the ownership group you know so can say well, here's the things they got wrong but it's hard to detract from the success Liverpool have had no other club has been able to come this close and there's lots of other clubs who've got loads of money Chelsea have had loads and loads of money Manchester United have got loads and loads of money. Arsenal have been have been very well financed. Nobody's come close to Man City. Can Liverpool go a stage closer potentially? But obviously, the fear, my fear, one of the biggest fears, is that you know we might be playing pontoon. Man City are, are on twenty one because they just are or twenty, and we're on nineteen. And you can twist, and you could twist and potentially get to twenty one, but the odds of going bust are far more and that's the fine knife edge on what Liverpool do which I understand spreads anxiety and makes us all feel worse because we now live in a, in a league that's like a cup you feel like if you don't win every game of football that's it you can't win that, that trophy anymore and it's obviously not the case but it will become the case if Liverpool don't get on back on the horse and start winning football matches soon because Man City are not going to lose loads Liverpool can claw things back they can turn things round they will need Again, maybe additional reinforcements, although I'd be I'd be wild if they pulled that off the bag so late in the day, but you know, not not unprecedented. They're gonna need to find a way to win. They're gonna find need to find a way to make things work until those injury reinforcements return, because they're either gonna make a decision to buy someone, and even if they bought one, it's still probably not gonna be enough. It's not gonna counteract ten players being out through injury. Those lads are gonna to have to come back. They're gonna to have to stay fit. We're gonna need things to go our way. Um, and the lads who are fit are gonna to have to dig deep, work hard, and find depths that they didn't know they had before. And you know, if anyone's capable of it, it's these lads and this manager because that's what they've been for so many years. The biggest fear is: do they have the will or the fortitude to go back into those depths again? I haven't been asked time and time and time again. I don't know. Um, but as I say, if it's possible. Liverpool are the one who are most possible to do it because Liverpool are the only ones who've proved themselves even slightly possible of doing it and slightly capable. So yeah, it's a fingers crossed thing. It's about faith. Um, but ultimately, that's what football is, isn't it? Football is about finding your moments of enjoyment, putting your trust in 11 lads and a manager and substitutes and then more and more the support staff that go around it. And all, all you can do in return is show your love and support. 
in any way, sh shape or form, whether it's like putting your lucky socks on or saying a prayer to your God or turning up to the football match or turning up before the football match or turning up after the football match and letting them know how much you're behind them because support provides energy. Positive energy is fuel for this football team. That's what they're built on. Uh, negative energy is not required. Um, it might be at some point and we can't affect, we can't, we can't all control how we feel in the moment. And that's not what we're talking about. Feel down, feel in, the, in, a, in a depression, feel in a funk, uh, feel angry in the moment. We'll take a step away and, and 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 you know pick ourselves back up again because if like me you've got no choice but to support this football club and support your football club then you've just got to batten down the hatches and strap yourself in for the ride whatever the ride looks like you don't get to choose the direction it's like getting on a roller coaster you're putting your faith in the creators of it that they're going to deliver you the the enjoyment and the thrill that you're looking for but you don't get to steer the roller coaster you just get to go on there and scream your way around it um right sad yeah keep your problems and fears coming we're going to try and exercise as many demons as possible in the comments um also if you want more Liverpool content, do go and check out Redmen Plus, um, which is the streaming service that we offer an extra content. Chris did a stat show looking into some of the issues that Liverpool have got in, in more technical terms, in terms of stats and tactics. If you want to get a deeper feel for how Liverpool are playing on the pitch, then that show is, is highly recommended. Uh, but also in terms of other shows that I can highly recommend, uh, my uh, co-guest from Saturday Social this week is over on 888. That is Flex. They're talking about the top five Premier League teams. Good old debate. Uh, I'll play a clip out from that, but head over there, drop a like, subscribe to that channel and say mate sent mate sent easy for me to say mate sent me in the comments underneath as well that would be absolutely wonderful if you do that it makes me look lovely um i hope you have a wonderful day hope you have a wonderful weekend and i'm more importantly though i hope the reds just can win a game of football wouldn't that be nice <laughs> there is no debate there is between there is. Manchester there is. United and liverpool what? Manchester united are a bigger club than liverpool football club go on explain how in every aspect. In what? what in every aspect? In yes. terms of what? In trophies? Terms of, in ter trophy collection? In terms of, what, in, what, in terms of trophies? Fan bases, One second. In terms of trophies? History, in, terms in terms of trophies? In, in terms of, if in terms trophy, of trophies. What, 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 we what, have just, more what, trophies you than you. Trophies? you we have Premier more trophies, trophies than you. We are a no, no, no. We have more club. trophies in our club um, than you have in your club. But that Fact. That doesn't mean you're a bigger football club. We have more trophies than you. We've got a bigger fan base than you. Global. Even still now. What does that mean? It Fans. means that we're more well supported than you over. So you, even though you've got more trophies, you're still not more supported. You know, you know what the definition of real big clubs is? Can I be honest with you? The real definition. Yeah, not being able to win the title. No, no, no. When you talk to the real big club. clubs, so when you talk, when you, when you talk real, to Los Blancos, no, 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 real, real. When you talk to like the Real Madrid's, yeah. the Bayern Munich's, it's European success. Is the, you know, you can't even look at me. You look at me straight. <laughs> That's the real <laughs> definition of a big club, European success. It is. 100% it is. Around the world. Yeah, around, around the world. Back, around right, right. Around Very the world. skillful debating. Very yeah. skillful. Yeah. I like what he's doing. He's got to use the best Very weapons skillful. in his armory.